Hello friends and welcome to Study IQ English. I am Joy C. Joy and we are going to start a very new chapter that is chapter 7 from Remacing for Indian Economy, Inflation and Business Cycle. So these are the topics we will be discussing in this video. The definition of inflation, why does inflation occur and types of inflation. And if possible we will be covering the other two topics as well. So let's get into the video first. First coming to the definition of inflation. So inflation is actually a synonym used for price rise which means that in local uh, words or when we say in a very layman language inflation means a price rise. So what is inflation in simple words? It is price rise and technically speaking the definition of inflation is a persistent rise in the prices of commodities or goods and services for a long period of time. So here two things are very important. One is the persistent rise. So persistent is continuous. Second one is for a long period of time. Okay, so a persistent rise in the price of commodities for a long period of time. This is inflation or the definition of inflation. <laughs> it is a synonym used for price rise. And uh, inflation affects developing countries more than that it affects the developed countries. And that's why inflation is too much discussed in developing countries than in developed countries. Now, what is the reason? We will understand gradually as we proceed with this chapter. But I'll just give you a clue here. That is, there are two types of inflation, demand pull inflation and cost push inflation. Okay. In developed countries, it is mostly the demand pull inflation, whereas in developing countries, it is mostly cost push inflation. Just keep this in mind. And when we discuss about demand pull and cost push inflation, we will understand that better. You have to keep this question in your mind. Okay. Inflation is a rate at which the general level of prices for goods and services is rising. So when we say that there is a 5 percentage inflation, it means that 5 percentage is the rate at which the prices, the general price level of goods and services are rising that is inflation so rate at which the general level of prices of goods and services is <laughs> rising is called inflation and during inflation the purchasing power of currency is falling why why do the purchasing power falls because earlier we would have bought more commodities or more quantity of commodities with the same money but now you are able to buy only lesser commodities let us take for example Suppose the price of one pen is rupees 10 and you have 100 rupees in your hand. Now you can buy 10 units of pen using this 100 rupees. Now there is inflation which means the prices have increased. Instead of 10 rupees now suppose the value of pen or the price of pen is 20 rupees and you have the same 100 rupees. Now you are able to buy only 5 units of pen here. So here there is a reduction. So from 10 to 5. Now you are able to buy only 5 units which means your purchasing power is less. That is the purchasing power of the currency is falling or the purchasing power is less. It is a quantitative aspect. Why is inflation a quantitative aspect? Because we measure inflation in terms of absolute numbers. Okay, that is a reason it is a quantitative aspect. This is a formula for inflation. The percentage is current CPI minus initial CPI divided by current CPI into 100. Now what is CPI? CPI is consumer price index. What is consumer price index? It is the measurement of inflation at the retail level. It is a measurement of inflation at retail level. Okay, that is CPI, Consumer Price Index. Now we will understand why does inflation occur or what are the reasons for inflation. Before that we need to understand two types of inflation that is demand pull inflation and cost push inflation which is very important. You need to understand what is the difference between both this. First coming to demand pull inflation. A demand pull inflation is caused due to an increase in the aggregate demand. Okay, so demand pull inflation, the reason or the cause of demand pull inflation is an increase in the aggregate demand. 
Now, what happens when there is an increase in the aggregate demand? In economics, we assume that everything else remains constant. That is the concept of citrus paribus, which means when one variable changes, everything else remains the same. Okay, so in case of increase in aggregate demand, we assume that the supply or other things are remaining the same. Now, let's take for example, aggregate demand in the economy is 100 and aggregate supply is 80. Okay. So here, what is the problem? Aggregate demand is more than aggregate supply. And we know that it's a very simple logic to know that when the demand in the economy is higher than the supply. Suppose you want commodities which are in short supply, the prices would be high. So the simple logic can be applied here. That is when the aggregate demand is higher than aggregate supply, it tends to increase the price level. The prices of commodities will increase. So this is the logic here. Aggregate demand is higher than aggregate supply. Therefore, the prices increases. And this price rise can be said as inflation. And this is demand pull inflation because here the demand is more than the supply. And that is the reason the prices have increased. So this is demand pull inflation. Now let us see uh, how can we represent it graphically. Let us take price on the y-axis and quantity on the x-axis. Suppose this is the demand curve and this is the supply curve. This point where the demand and supply meets is equilibrium. The equilibrium price can be quoted as P and quantity can be quoted as Q. Now what happens during a demand pull inflation? The demand of the commodity increases which means that the demand curve will shift towards the right. So demand curve has shifted towards the right. Now this is the new demand and uh, supply is remaining the same. You will see that the supply curve has not changed. Uh, only the demand has changed. So supply remaining constant. So here what you will see is price is P1 and quantity is Q1. So here you will see there is an increase in price and increase in quantity demanded. And this price rise is due to the increase in quantity demanded. So the price rise has happened or occurred because of an increase in quantity demanded. So price has changed from P to P1. Okay, that is the case. Okay, this is demand pull inflation. Now we have another category of inflation that is cost push inflation. Cost push inflation is where the cost of production has increased. Supply has reduced due to increase in cost of production. This is because of the supply factor. Demand pull inflation is influenced by the demand factor whereas the cost push inflation is influenced by the supply factor. So in case of a cost push inflation, the cost of production of a commodity increases and this leads to a deficient supply. Supply reduces. Because of increase in cost of production, the supply of commodities reduces. So that is cost push inflation. Now, when the cost of production increases, uh, automatically price will increase. Supply reduces. Let us take, uh, for example, supply is 80. Earlier it was 100. Now, because of increase in cost of production, supply is only 80. And uh, demand is the same. Earlier it was 100. Now also it is 100. So here you will see again supply is less than the demand. And the cost of production has also increased. Uh, so this will lead to increase in prices. This is known as cost push inflation. Now taking some example of cost push inflation. When the prices of petrol and diesel increases. Everything else in the commodity in the market. The prices increases. This is cost push inflation. Because there is an increase in the cost of production. So this is the case of cost push inflation. Now to plot it on a graph, let us take for example, uh, price on the y axis and quantity on the x axis. This is the demand curve and this is the supply curve and this point is called the equilibrium point. At equilibrium point, price is P and quantity is Q. Now we, what we have seen is here, <coughs> Supply reduces. Okay, so here the supply is less. So when there is a reduction in supply, the supply curve changes or shift. So supply curve shift towards the left. So this is a new supply curve, and in the new supply curve, you will see that this is a new equilibrium point, and here P P1 is the price and Q1 is the quantity. Here you must have noticed that the price has increased whereas the quantity has reduced. Okay, so see here. Price increased, quantity reduced. Now coming to 
demand pull inflation here the price has increased quantity has increased which one do you think is better demand pull inflation is better why even though the price has increased there is demand in the economy the quantity is high which means production is high the economic economy is growing even at a uh, inflation so even during an inflation the economy is growing so that is demand pull inflation and that's why generally it is said a moderate level of inflation is good for the economy it is considering the demand pull inflation so here price increases and the quantity also increases in case of a demand pull inflation and whereas in case of a cost push inflation the quantity reduces along with the increase in price okay so that's why cost push inflation is not good now recollect the point that we discussed earlier that is inflation uh, it is in discussion in developing countries inflation is too much discussed in developing countries why developing countries are more concerned about inflation it is because mostly in the developing countries it is cost push inflation that affects the economy than the demand pull inflation let us take the case of india i am not saying that there is no demand pull inflation of course there is but it is mostly the cost push inflation so that is the reason why developing countries are too much concerned about inflation in case of a cost push inflation along with the price rise the quantity also reduces which means production reduces the gdp of a country also or national income of a country also reduces as compared to <coughs> demand pull uh, inflation okay i hope you understood both these concepts clearly demand pull inflation and cost push inflation these are very important points very important uh, concepts uh, very much helpful for your examination as well now built in inflation is inflation that is unnecessarily caused due to increase in wages prices we will be discussing about it for sure built in inflation in this chapter itself so keep this aside built in inflation we will be discussing now measures to check inflation what are the different measures that can be used to check inflation first coming to demand side measures demand side measures first we need to understand what is the cause of demand pull inflation only if we know what is the cause we can suggest measures now what is the cause of uh, sorry cause of demand pull inflation demand pull inflation is caused due to an increase in the aggregate demand in the economy it is due to increase in aggregate demand now how does aggregate demand increases maybe because the income of people has increased government expenditure has increased then less interest rates or because of um, more money supply so these are all some of the reasons we'll discuss about the reasons but understand that it is caused due to an increase in the aggregate demand and there are multiple reasons for an increase in the aggregate demand like for example increase in income increase in government expenditure increase uh, in the money supply or reduction in interest rates etc <laughs> so from the demand side measures what can be done is to cut back the consumption that is to reduce the consumption thereby reduce the demand and for that what has to be done money supply needs to be reduced there should be lesser money supply in the economy then monetary measures like repo crr etc can be taken we will be discussing about monetary policy instruments in detail that's why i'm not discussing about repo and crr now we'll be separately covering monetary policy instruments supply side measures removing bottlenecks why removing the bottlenecks will help in increasing the supply and when the supply increases definitely the price will fall so there will be a fall in the prices then coming to cost side measure cutting taxes <laughs> taxes here refers to indirect taxes why because indirect taxes can increase the price of commodity so cutting down the indirect taxes direct taxes if cut down will increase the demand and cause demand pull inflation whereas um, under the cost side measure cutting taxes means cutting the indirect taxes can help so these are the measures but we will be covering uh, the measures of inflation in very detail so this is just uh, to give you a uh, brief regarding the uh, measures we will be covering each one in detail and uh, we will be doing that only after analyzing the causes of inflation once the causes are understood for you then the control measures become even more easy for you so we will be doing that now uh, these are types of inflation based on the level so 
based on the percentage or based on the levels of inflation we can divide inflation into low inflation galloping inflation and hyperinflation low inflation is also known as creeping inflation or walking inflation creeping inflation or walking inflation <laughs> such an inflation is slow and predictable that is the inflation is very less maybe up to a percentage of 4 4 percentage 1 to 4 percentage of inflation can be considered as low inflation which is actually good for the economy without which the economy will not grow there should be increased demand which can add to increased consumption and increased uh, supply or production that is gdp so low inflation is a uh, inflation rates which is very less that is inflation is low or slow the price rise is slow and also in predictable lines galloping inflation is when the inflation rises above 10% it's galloping inflation and hyperinflation is when the prices skyrocket and it is more than 50% a month now coming to hyperinflation we need to discuss a bit about hyperinflation uh, example of hyperinflation can be said as Argentina, Zimbabwe, etc., has faced hyperinflation, where the value of money depreciated so less uh, in their economies, and mostly hyperinflation is caused due to printing of currency. So, hyperinflation, the major cause is printing of currency. When an economy prints more currency in order to meet the problem of an increase in price, what actually happens is the money supply will further increase, and a further increase in the money supply will further add on to increased rates of inflation in the economy. So that's why a hyperinflation mostly caused due to the printing of currency. An example of such kind of hyperinflation caused due to printing of currency is examples of Argentina, Zimbabwe, etc., where uh, the value of money or the purchasing power of money went so low that the economy almost collapsed so it can lead to a collapse in the economic system or collapse of economy okay that is with regard to hyperinflation so just understand these three things low galloping and hyperinflation so these are all levels of inflation there is percentage and increasing inflation okay so like this you can remember so these are the three uh, types of inflation based on the rates or the level of inflation we'll be continuing with this module in the next video thank you so much for watching i wish you all the very best